George Soros knows more than almost anybody about how markets operate, but he also has genuine insight into how the world operates. Soros has been one of the most successful investors on the globe. His quantum fund, one of the original hedge funds, has an unequaled record of performance. And last year, at 77, he came out of retirement, made some massive bets, and by one account, netted himself personally $2.9 billion. I can't think of anyone better suited to help us understand this crisis. George Soros, welcome. Pleasure. Now, the, the government, the United States government is, is guaranteeing almost every financial instrument yeah, yeah, in the country. Yes, yes. It can't do this uh, uh, because, uh, indefinitely. So, so uh, you, you need this kind of government guarantee. Without it, there would be utter collapse, right? right? And this is generally now recognized, right. which means that the, the institutions that have this kind of insurance backing them up must be regulated. Absolutely. And so you need to improve regulations. But can you keep these guarantees indefinitely? Do you, do you foresee a future in which finance is going to be much, much more heavily regulated? Well, it certainly will be. And, and, and uh, the, the, the slower we move and the more reluctant we are to do the right things, the more money we'll have to throw at it. The one thing we have decided that we are not going to allow the financial system to collapse. That's what happened in the 30s. We don't want that again. We have crossed the Rubicon. We have started throwing money at the system, and we will keep on throwing money. And, the, and, the, and eventually, do you think, because of that, that fundamental crossing of the Rubicon, eventually the government will win, by which I mean... I, 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 yes, I think eventually, because th they do have I infinite ability to print money, yeah. okay? But the damage will be greater, the cost will be greater, uh, the whole thing uh, the, this uh, $700 billion plan, if it had been better uh, constructed, if they had thought about it earlier, if they would deal with the housing situation, the damage would be less. So this government, because it doesn't believe in government, is doing the wrong things. You, you need a government that believes in government, it also believes in 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 the, uh, in markets and wants to give markets the best the greatest opportunity but is trying to govern well so, so you need better regulation uh, not more regulation what does this do to america's balance sheet i mean the fed is taking on its huge um, liabilities the treasury is spending is going to spend all this money uh, are we going to be able to make up a lot of this uh, this money? Is this uh, presenting the United States with a kind of bleak fiscal future? No. Yes. It, it, see, it, it, we have gotten into the habit of consuming six to seven percent more than we are producing, and that game is finished. That was part of the bubble. It was one globalization. America as the center of, of, of the uh, uh, globalized financial markets was sucking up the savings of the world. Uh, you know, China was led, led, uh, uh, buying government bonds. Uh, and this, this is now over. Game is out. Uh, so it, it does mean a very serious adjustment we'll for have to, America. We'll, which means we'll have to save more. Yes. We'll have to live within our means. And yes, uh, yes, yes. We 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 have been using uh, uh, houses as as a piggy bank, taking uh, equity out of the mortgages, and that's what we use for savings instead of savings. What was fueling this bubble? Every bubble has two components: something, uh, some real trend, and a misconception about that trend. Now, the real trend has been credit expansion ever increasing use of leverage and the misconception has been what i call market fundamentalism the belief that markets correct their own excesses that they you can leave it to the markets give them free reign and of course that's false the, because markets don't tend towards equilibrium and occasionally therefore they they create financial crises but it really started with uh, President Reagan, uh, who talked about the magic of the marketplace, Margaret Thatcher. You see, when they came to power in 1980, then this belief was, uh, became the dominant creed. And this uh, then led to the globalization of markets, the deregulation 
of markets and the increased use of leverage and all those uh, f financial engineering. Now, since markets don't tend towards equilibrium but are left to their own devices, go to extremes and create bubbles, and then the bubbles burst, you've had a number of financial crises since 1980, and uh, quite a few of them. But each time, the authorities intervened and, you know, merged away the failing institution, stimulated the economy if necessary, lowered interest rates, fiscal stimulus, and so on. And so the, the crisis, the previous crisis, actually reinforced the mistaken belief that markets correct their own excesses. And why isn't it working this time? Because they're trying be, be, to do because, all those things. Because they've reached the end. In the end, uh, bubbles, when, if, if the bubbles contain a misconception, as they always do, then it can't be maintained forever. You know, you can grow a very long way, but in the end, uh, reality rears its ugly head. And that's what happened now. So uh, the housing bubble acted as a detonator that exploded the super bubble. So it was like, in a, uh, you know, in an atomic bomb. You have a small explosion that that creates a big explosion. So we had a small explosion in 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 the uh, 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 subprime. And uh, if you recall, uh, Bernanke at the time said, "Well, that's a hundred billion dollar hit. We can easily absorb it." But it now turned into what a two trillion dollar hit, because all one thing after another. Because the whole, this whole t uh, in, enormous construct the, it, it is built on false conception. It uh, seems, of course, unbelievable. How can such a powerful machine uh, run on, uh, on, on, this, on false premises? But that's what distinguishes social constructs from mechanical constructs. If a car is, you know, designed badly, it just won't get you there. But badly designed institutions do actually exist. As long as everybody believes in them. Ever, it's, it's all based on trust. That's right. Is it also um, going to overshoot on the on the downside and just in the way that it overshot on the upside? Yeah. And are we now in that phase? Well, you see, the, the credit markets have been in distress now for quite some time. The stock market finally is catching up and is now in this day, uh, sort of uh, capitulation phase uh, now, it's, uh, in, in the last few days. Do you see a bottom? Well, of course, there will be a bottom, but uh, the, you know, one of the things that my theory says that you can't actually predict the future, because the future depends on the decisions that people take, what, how the authorities react and so on. So while you can predict the, the, a trend uh, and you can predict that the bubble is eventually going to burst, you can't tell when. And that's how, for instance, I thought that in 98 already, the, it, it, it would uh, come to some kind of a climax. And I was wrong. We'll be right back with George Soros. Zakaria GPS is sponsored by BP, who believe it's time to go beyond. Go to CNN.com slash Fareed to watch highlights from Fareed's interviews with international leaders and newsmakers. It's a pretty big country. Have we found everything? We have oil on our shores. We should work hard to explore for new sources of oil. The oil companies have to look into alternative sources of fuel. No, I still believe that you have to have a balance. I mean, U.S. needs to produce more. In Italy, you'll find Florence. In this case, Florence is a cow. And important because Italian cheesemakers wanted to make the best Parmesan and more of it. Knowing that cows fed certain feeds produced higher yields of Parmesan, Cargill develops special feeds and a supply chain so the cheesemakers get just the right milk. Now Florence, the cow, delivers lots of quality Parmesan to Florence, the city. This is how Cargill works with customers. 
our children and our grandchildren worried about us getting in and out of the tub. If you have difficulty getting in and out of the tub, you don't have to worry anymore. Premier Bathrooms brings freedom and safety to your life. I worried uh, every time she'd get in and then she'd get out. Premier Bathrooms custom bath enclosures are easy to step into, feature sturdy hand grips and safety bars, secure locking mechanisms, and contoured seating. Oh, it just lifted a burden off me. I knew when she was in there that she would be fine. No worries at all. Rejuvenate yourself with Premier Bathrooms hydrotherapy jets. You don't have to fear slipping and falling anymore. Call Premier Bathrooms for yourself or call for someone you love. Call now and Premier Bathrooms will send you a free information kit. Call 1-888-296-6949. Closed captioning hours provided by Eglin's Best Eggs. Better taste, better nutrition. In my busy kitchen, I want nothing but the best. Eggland's Best. In my kitchen, I love Eggland's Best. That's why they're the only eggs I make for my son, the chef. Eggland's Best, the better egg. And we're back with George Soros. Tell me um, what it is that you think should be done. Because I, I, I've been reading you. Um, you wanted a different kind of plan than Paulson's plan. But it appears that what is being done now is much closer to what you wanted. That is to say, the banks are being recapitalized, or at least some of them. They're not yet. You see, what has happened is that uh, I said that the Paulson plan was uh, ill-conceived. It was basically the same kind of financial engineering that got us into the trouble that they wanted to use for getting us out of it and it was just the wrong thing and it's it's very would be would have been very harmful to waste uh, uh, I mean unfortunately uh, uh, he has been behind the curve all the way and still is and that's why the market is now collapsing it just uh, is not able to com uh, sort of come to terms to what needs to be done why do you think that is I, because i think that he is he has bought into this market fundamentalist ideology he, he did not want to uh, um, dilute the shareholders uh, which is what is necessary at the present time. Do you think not bailing out Lehman was a mistake? Yes. That's what actually uh, kind of unleashed the current uh, phase of uh, meltdown. And, and unfortunately, uh, the authorities have lost control of the situation. And that's why the markets are behaving this way. But now, aren't they, they Paulson has announced that they'll recapitalize the banks. No, and they have, he has not announced. And it's very important how it's done. I, I, I think it could be done, the $700 billion could work, although you also have to do something to stabilize the housing market. Right, but first let's talk yeah. about the, the recapitalization. What do you want that's different from what he said this week? It needs to be done properly, and if the, in this way, I think he could certainly, uh, uh, I would be, for one, would be very interested in buying into some banks at a, a distressed price, and others would too. So actually, you could mobilize private capital. You would then replenish the banks. Then you would say, for the time being, we lift the minimum reserve requirements. You don't need to have 8%. You only need to have 6%. So you can you can increase your 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 balance sheet. Yeah, then the banks would start competing for loans. It would turn everything around. But as, but as I say, the other element that that, that needs to be dealt with is the the, the, the uh, stabilizing the housing market. Okay. So so let's talk about the other element, which is stabilizing housing because it is housing that is the keeps underlying on. asset that keeps going down yeah if you so, and it is liable to overshoot so the, what you need to do you can't help the markets going down when it's above sustainable levels so it's not a question of stopping the market from going down but uh, stopping an overshoot so how would you do that uh, basically the, the 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 important thing is to reduce the number of foreclosures because foreclosures are put the extra pressure on which means that the mortgages have to be renegotiated and a new form of mortgage issued which is a sounder mortgage than the current one 
uh, to replace it, which would which the uh, householder could afford uh, to to pay, and would not uh, uh, exceed the the estimated value. Uh, of the house. In fact, it, let's say they would not exceed 85% of the estimated value of the house. Yeah. And the rest, would the loss would be absorbed by the uh, mortgage owner. But the loss is less that way than the losses that they are going to suffer if the house goes to foreclosure. But what, So what you would do would effectively renegotiate all these, these uh, mortgages mm. so that people are not foreclosed on. That's in right. some way or the That's other. Right. That's right. Now, they would stay in their houses. That would uh, reduce the supply. And uh, since and then mortgages would be available uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the advantageous, basically uh, at, an, at an interest rate based on the uh, government bond right. market because it would be guaranteed by the, by the uh, uh, government up to 85% of the value of, of the house. Right. So uh, people would then, who are currently renting, would want to buy. Right. And, and this is good social policy also in a sense because keeping people in houses yes. is good for the neighborhood. You evict somebody well, from a house, the value of it, every it house reduces, in the neighborhood. It reduces the social damage right. Right. and it just, it would stabilize the whole situation. It would of course result in losses. Right. Uh, which would be then re made up for by the recapitalization of the banks so that you have a banking system that can finance business. So this way you would, with, s with s some loss of course, uh, re-establish and you would have a short recession, not a long one. George, you're in an unusual position. You have been a, a skeptic or a critic of this new globalized world of finance, of the deregulation, of the enormous fluidity of capital markets, but you have massively benefited from it. You have been able to play this, the game that you play in the hedge fund space precisely because of all these forces. So is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, there's no contradiction because I think I understand how it works and I understand its flaws. And so uh, I s seem to be reasonably successful as an investor, but as a, as a citizen, of course, I would like, first of all, I would like uh, uh, the, uh, the market mechanism to work better. It's much better than government controls. Uh, so I'm, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer in the market uh, system, but I also recognize that the market system is flawed because all human con constructs are flawed and we need to improve them and I hope to but see but it improve. But government then would also be flawed. I mean, uh, well, of course, government. Is, I mean, uh, this is this is the the important thing to learn. I mean, you know, this is what my book tries to explain uh, uh, that that uh, uh, it is the human condition that perfection is unattainable. And just because, let's say, socialism has failed and government controls are inefficient doesn't make markets perfect. Markets are also imperfect. So you do need regulation, knowing that the regulators are also human. And what is worse, they are bureaucratic and they are subject to political influences. So you want to rely on them as little as possible. So you want as little regulation as possible, but you want better regulation. We'll be right back with George Soros. Okay. sometimes disturb others when you watch TV. Oh, just a minute. Does that have to be so loud? Tired of people asking you to turn the volume down? Now there's Listen Up. 
the personal sound amplifier that lets you turn the volume up for yourself without turning the volume up for everyone else. It turns ordinary hearing into extraordinary hearing. Look, it's smaller than a credit card, yet so powerful, you can hear a pin drop from across the room. With this handy device, you'll never miss another word at lectures, movies, shows, or even church. Other sound amplifiers sell for up to $100, but call now and you can get Listen Up for only $14.99. That's right, you get the Listen Up personal sound amplifier for just $14.99. So call now. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-306-5400. That's 1-800-306-5400. Call now. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who covers the health secrets of presidents past and future, is the next president fit to lead. CNN Tonight, 8 Eastern. The sun used to make our outdoor deck and patio space so hot and uncomfortable, we couldn't use it. But then we discovered the Sunsetter Retractable Awning. Our Sunsetter Retractable Awning opens and closes in just 60 seconds. It keeps our patio about 20 degrees cooler. It provides instant shade and instant protection from the sun's harmful rays. And our Sunsetter costs under $700. But now you can get your Sunsetter for as little as $398 when you call now to get this special $200 discount certificate and free awning idea kit. We love our Sunsetter Retractable Awning, and you're going to love yours too. Sunsetter awnings are assembled in America and guaranteed to last for years. So call now to get this free awning idea kit with DVD plus your $200 Sunsetter discount certificate. But this is a limited time offer. Call now. Call now for your free awning idea kit with DVD and $200 discount certificate. There's no obligation. Call 1-800-529-5402. The last debate night in America. Watch on CNN and CNN in Espanol. CNN Wednesday night. You've been an early supporter of Obama. Yes. Do yes. you think that he would handle this better? Yes. Who would be Secretary of Treasury if you had to pick? Well, I don't know if I, if I should answer that question. Uh, um, oh, would you serve if you were asked? Uh, no, I'm a little bit old. Uh, I would certainly be available with advice. I'm even available to this government with advice. But I'm not uh, going to <laughs> speculate. Get into that. No, no. I mean, I. People say that you uh, fund the Democratic Party. You've seen the. Uh, when you see things like the Saturday Night Live skit, yeah. what does it make you think? Yeah. Well, I, I, it was very flattering, of course. <laughs> so, what became of that $700 billion? <laughs> Well, basically, it belongs to me now. <laughs> Actually, it's not even dollars anymore, but Swiss francs, since I have taken a short position against the dollar. Oh, really? Well, that's not good. You're not to speak. I don't like you. <laughs> yes, uh, the U.S. dollar will have to be devalued sometime next week, either Tuesday or Wednesday. I haven't decided which yet. It will depend on how I feel. Well, well, thank you very much, Mr. Soros. You're a great man. Yes, could I just add that uh, even though you know what's coming, you won't be able to do anything about it. You're a wise man, Mr. Soros, and a powerful one. You are better than us. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> but uh, do, you, but... do you think that you have, uh, that, that rich people have undue influence in politics in America? Yes. Yes. But, but given the rules, you're not going to back out. No, I, I, I mean, the other rich people who have influence, uh, I don't, I try not to abuse. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't think that I misuse my money. I don't use my money to gain political influence for, for my private uh, interests, which is what many rich people do. And what, in a sense, market fundamentalism is, does, because it is in the interest of people who have a lot of money to have as little taxes as possible. I actually believe that th there is a need for taxation, that, th that th th this, this uh, anti-taxation uh, uh, position is actually false, because the government is supposed to provide services, and those services cost money, and somebody has to pay for it. Tell me what you think the uh, geopolitical or geoeconomic effects of this financial crisis are. Are we witnessing the kind of de-Americanization of the global financial system? In other words, are countries going to not rely on America as the center uh, of, of finance? I, I ask this 
because one of the puzzling moves over the last mm. few weeks has been with all this these calamities in the United States, the yeah. dollar keeps strengthening yeah. Yeah. because in a strange way, there's a flight to safety and the yeah. only thing yeah. people trust is the dollar. No, there's a technical reason. There's a shortage of dollars and uh, and uh, the dollar has been oversold. So in the medium to, uh, term, you ex you suspect the dollar will decline and America's central role will decline? I, I think that, there, that in many ways, uh, this brings home the decline in America's position in the world because we have overconsumed. The Chinese have produced a lot more than they consumed, so they built up uh, reserves. We built up debts, they built up assets. And the same applies to the oil producing countries. So there's been a tremendous power shift. Do you think this power shift is permanent? America will still be a leader, if not the leader, of the world. And in fact, if America uses its position to cooperate with other countries, it can re-emerge as the leader. And the world very much needs that kind of leadership. George Soros, pleasure to have you on. The book is fascinating. Thank you. Pleasure. And we'll be back.